Good evening. I'm Grace Lynn Guile, and welcome to Restoring Health Holistically. My guests today are two environmentalists. Maggie Jones is Executive Director of Denison Pequot Seapost, Coogan Farm Nature and Heritage Preserve. Craig Floyd is the Coogan Farm Manager. For 70 years, the Denison Pequot Nature Center has been a beloved mystic wildlife sanctuary, visitor attraction, and host to educational events for all ages. It features indoor natural history exhibits with woodland, wetland, and meadows displays of Connecticut's unique habitats and wildlife. Visitors can get a close-up view of live frogs, fishes, turtles, snakes, and learn to recognize local birds from a classroom exhibit of over 200 mountain bird, mounted <laughs> bird specimens. They had eight miles of nature tra trails, but I'm guessing this will expand given the acquisition of 34 acres in 2013. Congratulations, Maggie. Um, saving the historic Coogan Farm was a huge challenge at a big price of 2.8 million. Um, you got um, 1.7 from private donations, which is amazing, 500,000 from the state of Connecticut, and 600,000 from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife. What makes this historic property so valuable? Well, th thank you, Gracelyn. The, the fundraising continues, and uh, what makes this property so valuable is really multifaceted. For starters, it was one of the very first farms on the Mystic River, if not the first farm on the Mystic River. And then in recent history, it's also the last farm on the Mystic River. And so it became something that um, I took on really as my, my personal vision and mission to try to, to protect that, that last bit of open space along the Mystic River. It really started out as a conservation project um, in part because of its visibility and its interconnectedness mm -hmm. um, to, to the Nature Center and then across the river to the Peace Sanctuary. But really from, so it's, it's a combination of the wildlife, uh, environmental habitat piece, and then the history piece. It links the lands of two of Mystic's, actually three of Mystic's original settlers, the Gallops that, are, uh, that actually were at one time lived where the Coogan Farm is today, uh, to the Denisons, which is where the Nature Center leases uh, the property that where we have the Nature Center. And then across the river, we have the Peace Sanctuary, and adjacent to that is the Fish property. So all of the Denisons, the Gallops, and the Fish family farms all date back to the 1640s. That's amazing that you have managed to, by preserving this farm, you've managed to preserve a corridor, have you not? Absolutely. That and was explain one of the... why that's so important to nature. Well, it's important to nature um, because of you know, the different uh, plants and animals that are part of the whole uh, ecosystem in our part of southeastern Connecticut, particularly ground nesting birds. We're adjacent to Avalonia Land Conservancy properties and denison lands, we have woodland, wetland, and meadow. And so when we started out, it really was about preserving habitat because the Coogan Farm has what we know as early successional habitat. So fields and sort of uh, shrubby shrubby areas and edges and some grasslands that uh, abut woodland and it's, it protects two watersheds. We've got the Pequot Seapost Brook watershed on the east side of the Coogan Farm and the Mystic River on the west side. and we have identified 12 species of high conservation priority that utilize the habitats around the Coogan Farm. Can you give us, just name a few of them? I, I, can, name, I can name several, sure. We, can, we have American woodcock, we have blue-winged warbler, prairie warbler, wood thrush, American kestrel, uh, Who would know New England that these, cottontail. They're all existing in this developed t town of Mystic. Exactly, and so that, to sort of elaborate a little further, the, another important part of preserving the Coogan Farm is that it's so close to the heart of Mystic and it protects a green gateway to Mystic. It preserves the quality of life for all of us who live in Mystic and Stonington. It's creating a really sort of a, a central green space that mm -hmm. will allow people to uh, reconnect with, with the natural world and their heritage. And the heritage piece 
really emerged the more that we got into our campaign and started to literally physically un uncover the stone walls and the old foundations and we realized, my gosh, the history of this property is as compelling as the natural history and where those things interface in this historic farm became something that was really uh, compelling and clearly the community felt the same way because we had over 800 donors come forward to help make this project possible. So our goal was uh, $3.5 million. So it wasn't just the price of the farm. Mm -hmm. We had to raise money to uh, do some of the renovations and create a public park there. And will you and be doing trails, additional we, trails? There are existing trails. We're elaborating on those trails. We'll have a wonderful bike trail that will link from Route 27 and sort of bypass the whole busy uh, exit 90 area around the uh, intersection of Coogan Boulevard and Greenmanville Avenue. Our trail will go up through the Coogan Farm and pop out on Clara Drive so that folks will be able to uh, ride their bikes over to the aquarium in Old Mystic Village. Wonderful. That's great. Or walk. Or walk. And you can walk from the Nature Center to the mm -hmm. Coogan Farm and back. It connects to lots of different neighborhoods, um, different schools and ultimately the, the Mystic River to the west. And visually, as the crow flies and the pileated woodpecker fly directly across the river to the Peace Sanctuary, which is also managed by the Nature Center. That oh, has, I didn't know that. That has historic significance. Wow, so the, you really have a lot of responsibility and a lot of opportunity by having being involved in all of those uh, adjacent properties or contiguous properties. Yes. So this is really amazing. Can, uh, talk a little bit about how you made these wonderful partnerships that brought forth the funding for preserving all of this. Did, I'm sure that didn't arise by accident. No, it was very, very <laughs> carefully planned out. It, it started out, you know, as just sort of this little idea, and then it's. I started talking to people, and I put together a, a team of folks to help my campaign committee, and it just. It really is sort of people helping people and sharing the idea of creating a public park uh, close to downtown Mystic that would really help preserve the whole sense of place of what we all come to love as as the Mystic, you know, the little Mystic community part of, uh, that that part of Stonington and the Coogan Farm is is the backdrop, for example, to the Mystic Seaport. So when you stand on the uh, the bridge, the the historic drawbridge, and look to the north behind the Charles W. Morgan and the, the seaport, there's a little hillside that is all part of the Coogan Farm. And the thought of that becoming you know, a, a hotel and convention center or some kind of a commercial development, um, because that's probably what its what fate would have, would have been. Right. Um, and that was, that was compelling to people. So I started to lead walks on the Coogan Farm twice a week, every Tuesday and every Saturday. They were free and open to the public, and we just started to get the word out there. And every time you would take people for a walk, they were, they of course loved the cows. We had two cows, <laughs> that were, uh, really sort of feral cows on the property. We named them Gertrude and, and Bertha. And I never realized how many people loved cows, but they were our mas mascots. And I truly believe we wouldn't have raised the money we did if it weren't for those two cows. We were always on a mission to find them. <laughs> um, but really the, the, the community, the, the Nature Center uh, membership and uh, friends of the Nature Center came out and uh, held, held little parties and gatherings and told their friends. And it really just sort of worked in that way. And then, uh, I really should give major credit to the Trust for Public Land. We decided early on that we, we needed help. We couldn't do this on our own. And so we partnered with the Trust for Public Land. And they embraced and, and certainly uh, they embraced our vision and saw the significance of the property really as uh, open space, um, as, uh, but particularly as historic and, uh, his, and open space that had a natural history value in terms mm -hmm. of its habitat. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service through the DEP um, also supported our project because of the conservation piece and the habitat. I mean, there are right. not a lot of places adjacent to like the this coast anymore. Yeah, right. and so it was that coastal piece that was very important in terms of the. You know, we're right on the Atlantic Flyway, so this time of year you can go up there on a, a day with north winds, and you might see. 10 different species of hawks and falcons flying by, and, wow. and we've got a lot of uh, migrant 
uh, warblers and other songbirds that utilize the habitat there. And um, mm -hmm. it's just, and they're beautiful views. And there's always a breeze at the Coogan Farm. So lots of reasons. It sounds <laughs> Magnificent. I mean, I did go on one of those walks very early on, and it was quite cold, but it was um, it was memorable. It was really great to wander along this at that time even scruffier land in the middle of Stonington and know that it was um, creating a, a migratory pathway, if you will, from the Denison Pequot Sipos Nature Center down to the river. Yes for animals, and um, and then I didn't know about the across the river part. That's even better. Yeah. Well, there's a wonderful trail that goes through Denison, you know, now Nature Center land and Denison land mm -hmm. and links to Avalonia Land Conservancy land and the whole integrated tra trail system, which is uh, right around 10 miles mm -hmm. if you were to walk every little bit of trail and loop. Um, but it connects to the Mystic Middle School and to Seaport Heights and to uh, Claire, ultimately to Clara Drive, but to Maritime Drive and Pequot Sipos uh, Center Road, and um, uh, the uh, there's a, a trail that takes you right to what's now West Marine near the aquarium. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. so you can get anywhere from there. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> That's great. Well, I'm going to ask you one more question, and then I want to ask um, Craig, but. I want you to ask, what led to the decision to create the Giving Garden that will benefit New London County? Well, one of the things that was always important, and we talked about it really from the very beginning, and maybe it was the cows, I don't know, that, that spoke to us, but um, we always wanted to keep the farm in Coogan. It was important to our campaign committee. It was important to the Nature Center staff. And we, so we talked about that quite a bit. You know, what can we do to keep the farm in Coogan? It had been uh, a farm dating back to, you know, the, the very earliest uh, settling of the area in the 1640s when uh, John Gallup had the walls built there. And we know that they uh, had some agriculture there. They certainly had farm animals and grazing sheep and they had pigs and cows and, and other things. And so we wanted to keep elements of that we weren't certain that we wanted to get into the keeping of, of farm animals that right. might that, that you That's know, might a lot evolve of work. further down, but <laughs> certainly we wanted to have an agricultural component. And in talking to some of our our prospective donors, um, we were fortunate enough to uh, start to bat around some ideas um, with Lisa and Scott Bates and mm -hmm. the Robert G. Young's Family Foundation, um, and they have a particular interest in uh, helping. Uh, the, the hungry folks of New London in particular. Right, right. And so there was, uh, that led us to a deeper connection with the United Way. And, you know, this is, this is a small town. So there are a lot of people that are involved with our board, for example, that have also served on the United Way board. And mm -hmm. uh, people that support the Nature Center also support the United Way. And we reach out to a lot of area schools, um, including schools in New London and Norwich, uh, that benefit from, and, and Stonington and Groton, that benefit from the area food banks. And, and um, so that was really what led us to make a commitment to preserving some of the land or to, to uh, returning some of the land uh, into agricultural production. Great, okay, so once that decision was made, did Craig just show up and volunteer his services, or <laughs> were you a long time um, connected to the Denison Pequot Nature Center, and this evolved into you becoming the farm manager? Well, actually, our farm that we have on top of Clarkatog Hill, Maggie used to come visit. I remember her um, as a young girl coming and visit our farm, so I've known Maggie for a long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, they needed somebody to clear brush, and I, that's where I, I went over there and started clearing brush, and then. Um, they were looking for a change in the garden, and um, and I took over working in the garden. Well, that's great. So when did you begin developing this garden? Um, about August of last year, we changed it. Um, mm -hmm. Our first our first garden manager, Ian Cook, um, started that garden, and um, when I took over, I had a different vision. Um, you understand that there's 22,000 food insecure people in southeastern Connecticut. There's three to 400,000 in, in, in the state of Connecticut. So we have a big responsibility. So we had to go to a major production, but we didn't want to do a regular commercial farm. We wanted to do a high bricks, bio-intensive, biodynamic garden, which means that we're going to farm with Mother Nature. And consequently, our food is more nutritious than food that you or I can buy at any local supermarket. Um, and this is important 
because the people that we're trying to feed now through the Gemma Moran Food Bank in New London with the United Way, um, they don't get fresh produce. They can't afford it. Right. 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 I know that. Right. So our food is donated to the Gemma Moran at no charge to them. And so it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing. We're the only, only agreement like this in the country. Well, you're creating a model. Exactly. Hey, that's great news. It is. We had a, we had a, a local senator um, that came and visited in the garden, and I had a conversation with him about just that, the possibility of changing the way the United Way serves the food insecure by adopting our program across the country. Mm -hmm. It would be huge. Well, that would, that's, I think, a worthwhile goal for mm -hmm. your garden. Mm -hmm. So this sounds like ground, groundbreaking stuff, yeah, exactly. no pun intended. Exactly. <laughs> and so how big is the garden? Right now it's about 30,000 square feet plantable. Um, we went in there with excavators and took out stones weighing 30 tons. Mm -hmm. you know, um, yeah. As you know, Stonington has plenty, Stonington was has aptly plenty of named. stones. <laughs> exactly. And, right. you know, the, the plants can't, can't grow. Um, trying to go down through the stones. So we had to get rid of those first. And we realized that when we did that, we killed the soil, we killed the microbes, we mm -hmm. killed the communication system in there, but we knew that. We have the capability of rebuilding soil six times faster than, than Mother Nature can do it herself. And part of this garden that is so nice is that with all of our volunteers and all of our visitors, we are teaching them a different way that is more earth friendly um, in gardening not using any chemicals, no pesticides, mm -hmm. herbicides. Mm -hmm. um, basically, if it doesn't go in the mouth, it doesn't go in the garden. Yes. B because then, then it's gonna go in your stomach and then it's gonna make you sick. So consequently, um, what we're doing is, is, is really very, very special and I'm so glad to be part of it. Well, and the teaching element too, because um, a lot of the, the, the people that you are feeding um, not only can't afford fresh produce, but many of them do not really know where food comes from. They've not lived, you know, in Mystic it's a little more um, agricultural, so they may know what it grows on. New London, mm -hmm. maybe not. And I grew up on a farm, and so I knew um, what food should taste like, what fresh food, fresh from the garden, mm -hmm. how, how much more flavor it had, and as a health Nut. Nowadays, I also know how much more nutrition it has when you eat it immediately. And that's where, what, where the flavor comes from. Is it's right there, fresh and wonderful. Well, so. One of the things that we have at Coogan that, that is unlike any place else is that we're building a teaching kitchen. So, oh. so not only can I have you come to the garden and I'll show you how to, grow the, you know, how to make the soil, how right. to garden, how to grow the tomato, mm -hmm. but now we can go into the teaching kitchen and we can show you how to make great spaghetti sauce and how to extend that season so that they've got the advantages of that nutritious food for a much longer period of time. And when uh, do, you, do you have plans? I mean, how close are you to the teaching kitchen being functional or is that a year off? Our, no, it's not. Our, our um, opening is, is going to be sometime in April. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, so we're, we're anxious. Yeah, and actually I can elaborate on that a little bit. So it's just, that's part of the, you know, the Nature Center's mission really is to connect people to, to the land and, and to nature and uh, certainly connecting them to uh, the source of their food is an mm -hmm. important aspect of it. So this, uh, t the Nature Center facility at the Coogan Farm will be um, an extension of what we already have going on at the Nature Center. We already do some, some cooking programs there, but this will be much more uh, sort of targeted to uh, connecting people to um, making healthy food choices. And mm -hmm. there's, you know, I think a whole sort of back to basics movement that's happening now that, that, that people are becoming more sensitive to what they're putting into their bodies. And so we'll be able to do programs for some of the recipients of the food. So showing them when they pick up their kale, what do they, what do, they do with it? How do you make kale taste yes. good? And, and what's the, what parts of it do you eat? And what parts of it do you discard, if any? And, you know, how, um, but also uh, some of the like foraging programs, we do a huge wild mushroom festival every year. I wanted year. to go this year and I was out of town. I was down in 
Kentucky. But, but it, it was wonderful. <laughs> and people want to know, you know, so I found this mushroom. A, is it edible? But so you, you gave me this mushroom. Or I bought this mushroom, and I know that it's edible, but how do I prepare what it? Do I and do so with it? Mm -hmm. um, that sort of thing, but even canning and preserving fruits and vegetables, mm -hmm. uh, cheese making, making fermented products, um, those sorts of things will be just a few, a sampling of the kinds of programs that we will do in our uh, larger kitchen facility, but we also will have you know, a, a house and a welcome center where we can do conferences, we can do special meetings and mm -hmm. programs, not just around food, but other sorts of nature, history, farming, art, culture programs that we do can take place in the house there. And then we have a new a wonderful barn facility that will be uh, another classroom space for us that we're very excited about. Well, that sounds like your ambitious fundraising has led to um, a lot more opportunities of all kinds. So you're, it, this is a major expansion and I applaud, uh, I'm glad you have all the years of experience that you have running the other one because this is a big step in uh, a new direction and with a lot more, so It's a big step, but really it. it's, it's all about connections. And so now we are physically connected to Greenmanville Avenue and to, you know, the Coogan Farm was part of historic Greenmanville. We will have a Greenmanville Trail that uh, starts on Greenmanville Avenue near the seaport and comes up right through the, the Coogan Farm. And, um, you know, it, it really is about connecting people to their heritage. So, you know, our, the Nature Center's mission to inspire an appreciation of the natural world and our place in it, past, present, and future. <laughs> so it's, um, it's it all comes together right. very nicely. And Craig, I want to go back to your garden and, and ask you, how many varieties of vegetables are you growing? Well, we, first of all, let me say that we, we, we grow what the United Way wants us because they know their, their um, you know, their clientele. Mm -hmm. But um, we have corn uh, from thousand year old seeds that came from the Aztecs. Um, we have squash and tomatoes and, and basil. And, you know, if you're growing tomatoes at home, uh, you should grow basil with your tomatoes because they're buddies. And that's part of a bio-intensive garden. Mm -hmm. Tomatoes and basil like each other in spaghetti sauce, but they also like each other in the garden. Right. Um, and, and potatoes, we had white potatoes, red potatoes, sweet potatoes, red onions, white onions, um, okra. I'd never grown okra before. I grew it this year. It was awesome. Everybody loved it. Watermelon, cantaloupe, um, beans. We just, we grew an awful lot of stuff. And um, what did you grow besides veggies? We have the um, Mystic Garden Club has been a great supporter of us. And not only have they provided some great plants for pollinators and, and we, we have nine beehives on site because we're very pollinator friendly. They, they, they work for us very well. Um, but they built a, an herb garden and um, it's nice to be able to have the herbs to, to add to our production. Sure. But it's also nice to have the herbs because when you have children in the garden and you can go over and pick a fresh rosemary and you can have them grab that rosemary and put it through their hands and then smell their hands mm -hmm. and see their faces light up. Yeah. You know, it's more than more than the, just there's the bush. It's it's having them understand that there's all different kinds of things that you can put in food and herbs is one of them. So we have a nice herb garden. Uh, we also have uh, an heirloom orchard on the property mm -hmm. um, that we're in the process of a four year pruning program. Uh, to bring that back so that some of those old, old varieties... Do you know varieties... how old those trees are? Do you have any idea? No. Okay. Yeah. We think some of them may date back to the time that the Greenman brothers owned the property. So be after it was the Gallup farm, it was the Greenman farm. The Greenman brothers that at that time owned a big shipyard, which is today's Mystic Seaport. And so okay. that was their farm and they grew vegetables and had livestock there that uh, supplied food to their own families but also to their shipyard workers. And so some of, there may actually be an historic Greenman apple on the property. Um, wow. And there are, so there are apple <laughs> trees, crab apples, pears. But one of the most economically important plants that, that grows uh, on the property are sugar maple. So we have a couple of uh, older sugar maple trees. Uh, Craig tapped them this year when we got you know, a couple gallons of syrup. You know, we only, we only have two really tappable trees at the moment. But 
you know, that's that's something that historically was so significant to the early colonists when they discovered yes. that you could get sugar from, from a tree. A tree. <laughs> and I tell you, Coogan, uh, Coogan Farm maple syrup was like none other I've ever tasted. It was just delicious. Yeah, you want to get in good with your boss, you bring us some fresh maple syrup. <laughs> okay. <laughs> maple and so, <anything. laughs> I think we have some pictures that you sent mm -hmm. over um, uh, of the farm in action. We have about five minutes left, so it, tell us what we're seeing. These are some of my volunteers. Uh, we had about 250 volunteers this year. Uh, this is my, my core staff. Um, it was raining that day, so everyone is soaking wet. And, they're and just, smiling. And smiling. They <laughs> loved it. Oh, yes, I've got the greatest volunteers. They come out and they work so hard. Um, but this is part of the harvest that we did, and we're just waiting for the United Way truck to come and pick it up. Okay. And... Um, this, this that, is that's kind of a closer beautiful it is pretty beautiful. Um, and, and and when you see all that in, in real life and you realize just how vibrant it is and then um, realizing who it's going to it's, it's great the red potatoes in the top tray there um, it's just wonderful to see all that produce coming out of our, coming out, out of our garden and, and uh, next year our plans are we're going to double or triple that great and Oh. <laughs> Kids, I love little feet in the garden. Oh, that's and, great. And so when I took them in the garden at first, I, I took them over to where all the um, cherry tomatoes are, and I had them pick tomatoes. And, and when, when, when they bit into the tomato and, the, and, and it exploded in their mouth, they all started grinning. But then I asked them about carrots, and they all wanted carrots. So we went over and we picked carrots, and, uh, and there they are with their carrots. Look like popsicles, oh, yes. but they're carrots. Yeah, yeah. And this is uh, a picture of Pfizer volunteers. I got to tell you, Pfizer workers are the best, absolutely the best people that come and work. Um, this was a 40-person work party. Um, they have done so much. Our garden would not be where it's at if it were not for Pfizer <clears throat> to come. This particular time, um, they spread 3,000 pounds of, of amendments. Um, they spread uh, 15 yards of um, manure, and they didn't complain about it at all. <laughs> they did that, and they spreaded some compost leaves. Um, they sifted soil. They removed rocks. They took our fence down for us to store for the wintertime. They just really put their heart and soul into it. Yeah, yeah. they're really great. They mm -hmm. came and helped when I was uh, founding Cush Cleanup Stonington Harbors, they sent people over and had several on the board too. So yeah. it's a wonderful, but, yeah, wonderful. Pfizer has been great and uh, not to steal any of the glory from Pfizer, but we've had other organizations. We had a group that came from Mohegan Sun and Northeast Utilities. Uh, that might have been just before Craig started. They did some of the very early mm -hmm. uh, cleanup mm -hmm. work there. And we've had uh, church groups and civic groups like the Mystic Rotary Club. And then we actually had a whole group of, of several, I think there were seven different Rotary Clubs from s throughout Southeastern Connecticut that came and, uh, and worked for a few hours one day. And then as, as Craig mentioned, we had this core group of volunteers that are so dedicated and they've done everything from, you know, moving rocks. And there, it seems that there were weeks on end where all we did was move rocks to, the, <laughs> yes. uh, to, to make room all for right. vegetables. Well, we only have two minutes left, so I want to give you a chance to say how volunteers sign up <laughs> and how many you need, and if there's any specific types of uh, skills or labor or whatever that you need, um, tell the audience what, what your wish list so I'll speak in general, and then I'll, I'll hand the baton to, uh, to Craig. So anyone that's interested in volunteering at the Nature Center or the Coogan Farm, uh, you can uh, go into the Nature Center. You can sign up online, um, but l let us know of your interest. And we have lots of volunteer opportunities throughout the year at the Coogan Farm, in the, in the Giving Garden, uh, also doing trail work, uh, mailings, uh, all kinds of programs and events uh, that happen year-round between the Nature Center and the Coogan Farm. And uh, Craig can give you some more specifics how about, about how you, many Craig? you need in the garden. <laughs> yeah, we always need hands. Um, you don't need any experience. Um, if you're walking and breathing, you're good to go. Um, <laughs> the nice thing about volunteering is the fact that, that you're going to learn something that's very special and something can, that can make a significant change in, in, in the planet. Um, we did over 3,000 volunteer hours this year. Um, I could use 15 to 20 regular vol volunteers every day, early in the morning. 
Uh, not so much this time of year. Very, but, but in uh, the spring. But in the springtime, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you both. I'm delighted with what you've achieved and what you're doing for the community and for the future because um, preserving this was a real major feat, and I congratulate you both. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. thank you for tuning in. We'll see you again soon. Thank you.